Hello, good morning, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets on Friday, the 22nd of April, 2016. Okay, let's try and uh, assess the uh, aftermath post Draghi, okay, and uh, obviously the sell-off yesterday post Google uh, earnings, Alphabet, certainly missing forecasts, Starbucks as well, along with Visa and Microsoft as well. Okay, so please be sure to visit tradesignaler.com and download the latest app via Google Play and, and, and uh, Apple's App Store and uh, keep up to date with my analysis along with others via the app. Okay, now in terms of the markets today, um, let's see what the um, the assessment is now. The Euro USD, let's bring up the Euro USD first of all and the Bunds because it's uh, post uh, Draghi show. It's the aftermath post Draghi. So let's uh, let's try and bring that up for you, okay? Let's see exactly what the Euro USD is doing here. Okay, so the Euro USD, given the price action yesterday, as you can see, total chop, very erratic, very volatile. Uh, we had the, uh, well, Mr. Draghi basically stated that there will be no alterations and no adjustments in his policy stance. And that obviously uh, triggered the short squeeze in the Euro. And then subsequently the Euro fell after he downplayed the inflation uh, number going forward. Now, I think one of the biggest crucial points here now in terms of what's one of the reasons why the, the French CAC hasn't fallen today either is because Mr. Draghi's emphasis on the fact that we have weaker inflation is really the the um, the overriding factor that we are going to get this prolonged um, QE, okay? Uh, we're basically going to get this prolonged QE, okay? And uh, it certainly seems to have helped the European equities rally, given the fact that we have a weaker euro. So his job was done, really, if you think of it from that perspective. He doesn't really care what the market thinks. All he cares about is, is making sure that the euro falls, and that's exactly what occurred. So in essence, it's a win-win situation for Draghi, because European stocks have remained afloat. If I bring up the German DAX, and uh, you can certainly see that this has worked. That the pivot high, obviously, um, the day yesterday was uh, 10,450. And we, after hitting this pivot low at 10,340, you can see the markets hit 10,420 again. And almost uh, attempted to close the actual gap itself. So his, jo his job is done. His job was basically to minimize the fallout in the equity market, which obviously he's been successful. And obviously uh, make sure that the euro collapses. And that's exactly what's occurred as well. So, win-win situation for Mr. Draghi. Well done. Okay, hats off to the guy. He's done so well. He's done very well thus far. Okay, now, especially given the fact that we had the US market sell off as well last night with the Dow Jones down, the S&P, the NASDAQ all down. And NASDAQ, obviously, NASDAQ sell off was exacerbated, uh, mainly due to the uh, fact that uh, we had this uh, scenario and the situation with regards to the... Uh, earnings from Google and Microsoft so again that was another situation that was exacerbated to a large extent okay now how do we interpret the market going forward again it's all about the euro USD now given the fact that the euro USD now is coming into potential support that would be then be interpreted as a risk-off uh, scenario for equities so bear that in mind okay now let's bring up, bring up the chart of bonds because it's the bonds that's going to be very important here to see if they can potentially bounce and uh, trigger off another round of uh, risk aversion um, uh, so risk um, embracing risk risk on okay so uh, the uh, the formula here is that the bonds move lower yields move higher and obviously the euro then uh, moves higher as well if the bonds move higher yields move lower and as you know the euro would then move lower and then equities move higher now as you can see here we certainly seem to have held a potential double top although the, the top itself circumspect the double top one could argue that it was a higher high, and now we attempted to make a higher low. So the, 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 that that one could argue that. Okay, now we did have this HNS formation on the bonds, and that certainly has certainly played out to a large extent, as you can see here. The bonds are falling, yields are rising, and that should obviously technically cause the euro to spike as well. Okay, that hasn't materialised thus far. The euro is actually moving the opposite direction due to obviously fundamental divergence and misunderstanding for mr draghi etc etc it could be various reasons okay uh, various various reasons so at this moment in time you can certainly see that the the euro or the uh, the bond certainly is falling now one would come to a conclusion that the bond certainly has hit or found support at this level at 116 
uh, 162.2. And therefore, the bonds are now expected to rally. If the bonds rally, that will cause further weakness in the euro and equities will rally along with the bond. OK, so that certainly that scenario certainly is open to uh, interpretation. So uh, having said that, you can see that the German DAX or should we say the NASDAQ, sorry, the, the NASDAQ itself has closed the gap at uh, the uh, 4496 level. And therefore, one would argue that you are looking for a potential bounce. Especially given the fact that the European markets have held on to their gains, except the FTSE, unfortunately. Okay, so interesting, interesting scenario thus far. Okay, the Euro USD, keep an eye on that. If that support holds, and you are looking at risk off for equities. Okay, now Mr. Draghi, the way in which I interpreted it, that he was certainly overtly hawkish uh, from my perspective. He certainly is not going to go ahead and cut rates. He hasn't done a U turn on potential end of rate cuts, and he's going to stick stick with his guns with regards to QE. Okay. Uh, he did uh, reiterate the same old scenario where we have all the tools available and we will adhere to our Monday, blah, 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 price stability, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, now, it's just the aftermath. It's the, it's the aftermath that you have to assess. Now, from my understanding in terms of the economic data today, let's see. Okay, so Chinese business sentiment is certainly better overnight, stronger than expected. Uh, Japanese data, weaker than expected. Uh, German, or should we say French data, mixed. Uh, services PMI and composites certainly came in better, but the manufacturing came in weaker. And one could attribute that due to the fact that the uh, stronger euro, hence the reason why the services obviously were better. Now, the PMI composite out of Germany, weaker services, uh, weaker, and manufacturing PMI slightly stronger. Well, you can attribute that to the German uh, uh, export machine. Uh, Italian data certainly came out stronger overall, so that was certainly a positive. But the Eurozone as a collectively certainly came out weaker. So that was a cause for concern. Uh, although, like I said, Italian retail sales, industrial sales certainly came out better than expected. Now, we have Canadian data on tap later on. Then you've got manufacturing PMI, Baker Hughes, rig count. And that really is the only piece of information that we have later on. So for now, uh, the emphasis and the focus will remain on, from my perspective, will be the Euro. Uh, USD JPY is certainly coming into resistance as well. So that certainly is a cause for concern especially given the fact that USD JPY has been so uh, uh, interwoven with the market. So let's just bring up the USD JPY. You can see here, you're now coming into that uh, potential previous support equals resistance uh, on the, uh, let's just bring, sorry, bring up the USD JPY. One second. That's the yen. Here we go. Okay, so you can see you've got a potential double top going up on the 10-minute chart, 60-minute chart. I'll be able to show you in a four-hour better. OK, so the four hours coming into that previous support equals resistance zone. OK, and therefore you're looking at weakness on the US dollar. So a yen certainly or a weakness in yen certainly has helped. Although having said that, that was mainly due to a story uh, from uh, Japan overnight with regards to negative rates. And that certainly helped the yen fall to a large extent, uh, given the fact that they are. Excuse me. Yep, giving negative rates to potential banks and obviously that's causing the yen to fall. OK, so. From my perspective here, obviously this is the, 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 the Central Bank of Japan is certainly attempting any 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 means necessary to, to force that yen lower. Uh, now, in terms of the US dollar, let's bring up the dollar chart as well uh, whilst we're here. The US dollar chart, oops, a daisy, I've gone to the wrong chart. One second, go back to EU indices and then bring up European. Where art thou? Okay, so we just need to bring up the dollar index now. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the dollar index now is all certainly coming into potential um, potential uh, resistance as well. So that's certainly something to consider. But the main concern, like I said, was the USDJPY. If I bring the USDJPY chart, here we go. Okay, USDJPY four-hour chart, and you can see here. Previous support equals resistance, along with the US dollar as well. Okay, right. Okay, so in terms of economic data, that certainly has been the um, so mixed European data, although weaker overall Europe. French data, certain parts of it were weak, certain parts of it were strong. So mixed picture altogether. Now, in terms of the Asian markets, you had the um, the uh, Nikkei higher overnight, given the neg obviously weaker yen story, uh, and uh, the negative rates being offered to the banks, and that's forcing the yen lower. Uh, the Shanghai market managed to shake off the early weakness and finished at not 0.2% uh, higher. 
So that certainly needs to be respected as well. Now, going over to the uh, Euro stocks now, looking at the technical factor, daily chart in the Euro stocks, it certainly seems like it wants that 200 MA, folks. It's taken out all of the previous resistance zones, previous support equals resistance in this zone as well. Now, you do have this key level here, previous support equals resistance, but it certainly seems like it's consolidated thus far, ignored Mr. Draghi and wants to push higher. That's just my interpretation thus far, so bear that in mind. 60-minute chart at the moment, we certainly seem to be stalling. If we continue to hold the resistance up here at 3160, then obviously you are looking at a break of this uh, rising contracting wedge type pattern and looking to potentially test the support below at 3100, so bear that in mind, okay? In terms of the German DAX, let's bring up the German DAX whilst we're here. Again, you have that unfilled gap that needs to be targeted above. Whether or not this market can close that gap will be watched very carefully and will be a very impressive move as well. For now, you have an intraday double top scenario here, and obviously that unfilled gap certainly remains, so watch out for that unfilled gap. Okay, 60-minute chart. Again, you certainly are a stalling here on the German DAX at the moment. You do have the unfilled gap below, so bear that in mind. You've got an unfilled gap down here, and that gap certainly will be potentially targeted. Again, all eyes in the euro. If the euro starts to appreciate here, then we certainly have cause for concern, okay? Bringing up the uh, daily chart, the German DAX as well, just to give you an insight and in, in perspective, given the fact that we are above the 200 MA, and like I said, we do have that gap above at the uh, 10,700 zone. Now, only thing that's going for the European stocks is the weakness in inflation, and also the, the German or the Greek story that uh, we have potentially resolved Greece to a large extent. Okay, now the overwhelming bearish factors are quite considerable, so again, one needs to be uh, open to that as well. So bear that in mind, okay? Eurogroup's different contingency plan would have to be 2% of GDP, 3% discussed. We'll propose package on Spain midday. Uh, 250 regling, Honeywell earnings coming back than expected. Okay, so other than that, Daimler, obviously also the German auto sector certainly getting hit today as well, so that certainly is a laggard. Okay, so German DAX, again, about the gaps, you have an unfilled gap above and then multiple unfilled gaps below. So again, open-minded. Again, it will be based on the euro, okay? Looking at the French CAC, we're still holding that 200 MA, we're still struggling below that. Again, like I said, you do have that H&S form, you have the unfilled gap above. You do have a H&S formation, a 60-minute chart, so certainly keep an eye out for that. Uh, at the moment, we're still uh, in that zone. We've, st we've still held that uh, that gap hasn't closed as of yet. We still have this potential for H&S formation, so watch out for that, folks. And like I said, you have the unfilled gap below at uh, four five hundred. So uh, remain vigilant with regards to that. Okay. Looking at the FTSE 100 now, let's bring up the FTSE itself daily chart. The FTSE again, we've held that resistance zone. This bombing tail is quite interesting, so keep an eye on that bombing tail. The 60-minute chart, again, you are holding horizontal support, uh, so keep an eye on the horizontal support chart, uh, as well. Certainly a, a, a very strong argument here for a H&S, left shoulder, head. Okay, head has been put in, looking for a right shoulder, weakness, and then obviously looking to potentially sell off quite substantially. So, again, keep an eye on that. That certainly is interesting, okay? So I think that's a wrap in terms of European markets, folks. Again, it's all about the euro. Watch the euro. If you can hold that 1.12560 zone, you are looking at risk off. If the bonds start to collapse further, again, it's risk off. The bonds start to move higher, then you'll see the euro continue to move lower, and then European equities will certainly catch a bit. So again, uh, given the fact that uh, you've had uh, Japan higher, China higher, uh, it's whether or not the US markets can start to catch a bit again. We'll watch out for that gap fill support on the NASDAQ. That certainly is a solid, solid support zone. And let's see whether or not that materializes. Okay, on that note, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs, as always. Uh, there is the 25% uh, uh, new account opening offer that I think everybody should be uh, taking advantage of. Certainly would be uh, very, very enticing uh, and uh, a very easy and handsome way to uh, start your trading career. Okay, folks, on that note, goodbye now.